Greetings! This is a complete run-through and overview of the Blackmagic Designs Speed Editor, made exclusively for the DaVinci Resolve. I try to leave no stone unturned on the functionality of this quite powerful and compact edit controller. Every button and feature will be covered. Although the Speed Editor is made specifically for the cut page in DaVinci Resolve, I will be demoing it also in the edit page, just to show you that the speed editor can be quite useful in the edit page as well. Let's start with the general layout of the controller. At the top left we have a group of six keys, which all offer different ways to bring media to the timeline. Then we have the mark in and mark out keys which function also as clear in and clear out keys when double pressed. Then we have a group of six keys, which offer different ways to trim your clips. At the left bottom, we have three keys offering the quick addition and switching of three different transition types. Straight cut, dissolve and smooth cut. Then we have eight keys at the top center offering various functions in the cut and the edit pages, which we are going to go through soon. Then we have the 12 sync bin multicam track selection keys, which speed up editing multicam clips. Multicam clips are created and joined either by sync based on timecode or based on matching audio waveforms. At the center bottom we have the shortened spacebar for playback and stop. In the top right, we have the source and timeline keys to activate either one of the windows. In the cut page, the source key opens up source tape view, which puts all the project's clips into one continuous line, easing the browsing of all material considerably. Then we have three white keys for the activation of three different modes that the search dial can be operated on shuttle, jog and scroll. And last but not least, we have the hefty metal dial which can be used to scrub, search, trim and move stuff within Resolve. The search dial can also be pushed like a button, but it has no button function. Some keys have a light on top to indicate whether the function is active or not. If a key has markings on the front side of the key, it means that the key has a secondary function which will actuate by double pressing the key. Some functions require a key press and then holding the key down to operate the function with the dial. And some functions require double press and holding the key down. Another thing to point out is that you have to take notice on what tracks are activated in the timeline, as the commands usually apply only to the tracks that are selected in the timeline. Now, let's go through each of the keys individually, starting with Smart Insert, which can be found at the top left corner of the panel. This key brings media from the source window, based on the in and out markings, to the timeline's playhead position. In the cut page, the media will be brought to the nearest edit point, as previewed by the Smart Indicator pointer. A fitting clip length will be created to the timeline for the incoming clip, so it won't overwrite any existing material in the timeline. Double press inserts the entire clip from the source window to the timeline, ignoring the in and out markings. You can also activate a clip or multiple clips in the media pool and bring the selected clips to your active timeline using the same logic. When you bring a clip to the timeline using Smart Insert into a cut point, with a transition. In the cut page, the transition remains on both ends of the new clip. In the edit page, the transitions will be removed. Next up is the append key, which inserts the in and out selection from the source window after the last clip in the timeline. Append becomes handy, particularly in collaborative projects when you don't want anything to change in the existing sequence, but you still want to bring new media in. Double press append to insert the entire clip from the source viewer after the last clip in the active sequence. This ignores your in and out points in the source window. You can also activate a clip or multiple clips in the media pool and bring the selected clips to your active timeline using the same logic. 
Next, we have the ripple override, which substitutes the clip at the timeline's playhead with the in and out selection from the source window, also removing or adding the needed space for the new clip with its different length. This means that the ripple override will not maintain the timing of your sequence. You can also activate a clip or multiple clips in the media pool and bring the selected clips to your active timeline using the same logic. Close-up creates a roughly 30% zoomed-in clip from your active clip in the timeline to the next empty video track. The zoomed-in clip starts from the timeline's playhead. If Resolve detects a face in the footage, the image will also be reframed, focusing on the face. Holding the key down will activate Y position, meaning that you can adjust the vertical position of the image with the dial, to reframe it properly if need be. If you have a color grade in the original clip, it will also be copied into the new zoomed-in clip. Place on top brings the in and out selection from source window to the next empty new video track to the position of the playhead in the timeline. With audio, this key could be called place on below, as the new audio track is created to the next empty track below the existing audio tracks. You can also activate a clip or multiple clips in the media pool and bring the selected clips to your active timeline using the same logic. Place on top becomes handy when you need to add the same clip multiple times on top of each other for some effects work. For the source override key to work, you need overlapping timecode in multiple clips, meaning clips from jam synced cameras. If there are no synced clips, this function does nothing. With source override, media is inserted in a kind of reversed manner meaning that you first mark in and out points to your timeline where you want to bring the new media in, and then you choose from the sync bin the synced track to be used. Press in and out to set an in point and out point in the source or the timeline window. With in and out, you can also choose to partially export a sequence in the delivery page or assign a duration for an effect in the timeline. As a general rule, a clip inserts to the playhead position in the timeline, but if you have an in-point marked in your timeline, then the clip inserts there. If you have no in-point in your timeline, but you do have an out-point, then the end-point of the inserted clip from the source window will align with the out-point marked in the timeline. Hold Trim In in the source window to adjust the in-point with the search dial. In the timeline window, Hold Trim In to adjust the green highlighted nearest in point. Press Trim Out in the source window to adjust the out point with the search dial. In the timeline window, hold Trim Out to adjust the green highlighted nearest out point. One of the best features and selling points of the speed editor is the ability to trim with the dial. It's simply more fun with the dial. Press Roll to trim clips by rolling the nearest cut point in the timeline, using the search dial. Roll moves the cut point without moving the clips, by taking away frames from the next clip and give that same amount of frames to the previous clip. Using Roll can do the heavily used J and L cuts, which means that the image and the audio tracks don't cut away at the same time, thus making the edits smoother and more seamless. Double press and hold to slide the entire clip on the playhead using the search dial. Slide is moving the clip under playhead by rolling the both ends of the clip at the same time. Press slip source to slip footage within the clip on the playhead. If the clip you want to slip is on the left side of the smart indicator, press slip source to modify the current or previous clip from the playhead. Press Slip Destination to slip footage within the clip on the playhead. If the clip you want to slip is on the right side of the smart indicator or playhead, press Slip Destination to modify the clip on the playhead or the next clip from the playhead. Slip keeps the edit points intact and moves the content within the clip forwards or backwards. Press Transition Duration to modify the length 
of the nearest transition from the playhead using the search dial. Press cut to change a selected transition into a simple cut. The LED illuminates when the cut transition is armed in the live overwrite mode. Press dissolve to add one second dissolve to the nearest edit point from the playhead. The LED illuminates when the dissolve transition is armed in the live overwrite mode. In the edit page you can activate multiple clips in the timeline and push any of the three transition buttons to change the transition type. Press smooth cut to add a one second smooth cut to the nearest edit point from the playhead. The LED illuminates when smooth cut transition is armed in the live overwrite mode. It is recommended for smooth cut to be used as a relatively short transition as its goal is most often to make the cut more seamless. A longer smooth cut can often appear a bit wonky. Escape works as in a regular keyboard as an all-purpose reverse function key. It stops tracking, deselects control points, exits the full screen view mode, clears a selected camera in the sync bin, closes the take selector, and retime controls and returns from single camera view into the multi camera view, just to name a few. Double press escape to perform undo. The sync bin key opens up the sync bin. It's meant for multi cam editing. Sync bin displays automatically all the available synchronized tracks. You can activate an available track using the numpad and 5 second clip becomes automatically activated. If you want to bring that clip to the timeline, just press the source overwrite key and the clip will be inserted in sync with the rest of the material in the timeline. Press and keep down the audio level key to adjust the audio level using the search dial on the clip in the timeline under the playhead. Double press to add a marker in the timeline's playhead position. Another double press on the marker opens a comment box where also the color of the marker can be changed. In the cut page, the double press and hold on marker opens a color palette from which you can change the color of the marker using the dial. Press full view to play back the video in full screen. Double press for review to play back the area of your most recent edit. You can also press the full view button to close the full screen display. Press and hold transition key in the cut page to open a transition menu from which you can change the transition to be used. Double press to hold to modify the font of a title nearest to the playhead. LED indicates if transition is armed in live overwrite mode. This key does nothing in the edit page. Press split to add a cut point at playhead. Or if the playhead is over an existing cut, the clip will be rejoined. Double press and hold the key to move the clip on the playhead using the search dial. Release the key to set the clip into its new position. Other clips move from the way and will not be overwritten. Press snap to enable snapping mode designed specifically for the search dial. With snap turned on in jog mode, and when the search dial is rotated very slowly, playhead will pause at each edit point in timeline. The key is active when the LED lights. Double press and hold the key to dynamically resize the viewer window using the dial. Press ripple delete to delete active clip from your timeline, or if no clips are active, the clip starting from the playhead will be deleted and the remaining gap will also be closed by ripple. The camera keys from 1 to 9 activate and switch the different camera angle tracks in a multicam clip in the edit page as well as in cut pages sync bin view. Keys light to switcher function in live overwrite mode. In the cut page, these keys can also be used for track selection in the timeline. Live overwrite mode activates sync bin and multicam viewer and switches the speed editor into a different mode, slightly changing the functionality of several keys to accommodate live overwrite workflow. You kind of paint the angle you want to be used at 
any given point in the timeline by keeping down the track numpad number you want to be displayed and then dialing the timeline onwards or backwards with the dial. In Live Overwrite, I can activate Dissolve and Close Up and the inserted track will be zoomed in and begin with the Dissolve. The numpad tracks function like a live stream video switcher. You can swap, update or insert video content on the fly. Double press to random to edit a random camera angle with a random duration into the timeline from the sync bin. Press video only to bring only video from the source multicam clip into the sequence. This key works only in the cut page. The LED illuminates if the key is activated. When editing multicam, you insert most clips keeping the video only button active as you usually already have the used audio in place in the timeline, so you don't want the clip's own audio to overwrite the existing audio in the timeline. Press audio only to bring only audio from the source multicam clip into the timeline. This key works only in the cut page. LED in the key indicates it being on or off. The source key activates the source window in the edit page. In the cut page, the source key opens the source tape view, which comes useful when sifting through lots of clips and material. The timeline key activates the timeline window. Your right hand can operate the search dial and toggle between the source media and the timeline, while the left hand marks in and out points and moves that media to the timeline with the edit keys. Shuttle is closest to the regular keyboard's JKL playback control. It enables the jog wheel to rewind and fast forward long clips. Shuttle is close to the speed of the keyboard's JKL scrubbing. Jog enables the jog wheel to browse frames with precision. Jog zips you along the timeline or through footage with good precision and is the mode you will most likely use the most. The jog offers the slowest and thus most precise mode in scrubbing through the frames. Scroll is like jog on a higher gear. It enables the jog wheel to browse in the accuracy of seconds. Scroll offers the fastest speed in scrubbing through the material. That's all folks. Once you start to get the speed editor's dedicated buttons and the use of the search dial into your muscle memory, your editing will ease up and speed up considerably. You have a good one.